we now have six stroke survivors on the screen talking to each other from very different locations. And the, and the question is, or the, it's not a question really, the mission is, you know, how can we make this uh, something that really augments, supports, reinforces, advances stroke recovery? Mm -hmm. uh, it also happens that, that all of you happen to be really committed to this. I know uh, Bobby's in an effort to be here every time. Gene does everything he can to be here. Uh, Joanne does the, the same thing. And of course, Daniel and Allison are committed to education. So thank yeah. you all for, well, for joining us. Uh, there are a number of other people who want to join, but they, they can't do it at one o'clock on Thursdays. I'm not wedded to, to this time, so we'll try to find when the most people can, can join. Mm -hmm. uh, Allison Shapiro is, is, is with us from Virginia. Uh, Allison has a serious stroke, and she also is a committed survivor and educator and teacher, and, and uh, so I wanted you guys to meet here. Allison, why don't you introduce yourself, please? Okay, Rips. Thank you very much. Hi, everybody. Hi. I had two brainstem strokes 13 and a half years ago. And I was profoundly injured. Profoundly. And I've made quite a good recovery. And I, out of that recovery, I decided that there were things that I had learned that I could teach. So I began teaching recovery skills 10, more than 10 years ago. And I speak in rehab centers and I coach individual people and I talk to care providers and I write, I wrote a book, then I write blogs. And I'm gonna be making a series of podcasts with Daniel all in the service of teaching people that we can do a lot to change what happens to us, that we are not helpless, and how we approach our recoveries makes a huge difference. You know, let me add one thing. I got, I, I was lucky to get to Allison in my darkest moment. And uh, I remember the day when my wife, she was all over the web and looking for information to help me, and uh, she was overwhelmed. And finally, she got hold of Allison's video and uh, brought it to my bedside and say, watch this. And we were both in tears as we were watching. So it really is someone who is, you know, connecting to you by the heart, knowing where you are, because they have, she has been there before. And uh, it was like, she can do it. She's telling me I can do it. Let me give it a try. So, and then after that, I'd be in touch with Allison. And I, I remember I wrote an email to Allison. And I was hoping, I was not hoping for anything. It was like throwing a dart in the dark and see what comes back. Mm -hmm. And uh, I remember I was so elated when Allison's name showed up in my inbox and said, how can I help you? And that started a conversation that has benefited me tremendously in my recovery process. I'd like to observe that this <laughs> situation of a family, a, care, a stroke survivor having a stroke and having no idea you know, where to get information and support is a problem we're trying to solve with what we're doing today. Yeah. Hopefully we're, you know, we're gonna use this, this method of communicating online to provide new survivors and their families information that will aid their recovery. For no other purpose whatsoever. All right. Bobby, do you want to say more about yourself? Or would you say more about yourself? Oh, no, that's it. We have, I said, we have the same history. I mean, uh, uh, brainstem 
and uh, it keeps my balance out of proportion in my double vision. And I believe, you know, a small suggestion is a big difference to me. When did it happen, Bobby? It happened October of 2013. 2013. So you're two yeah. years on. Two years now. Two years. Yeah. Two years. There are many things to teach about this. Um, I don't know, Reams, if you, what you want to do in your meeting. I don't want to start no, doing I, I want I want you guys to, to share as you, as you will. Okay. Bobby, there are, there are so many things. You can read the book. You can contact me, and I will, I will talk to you by email individually. But yeah. I, will, I will say to you that one of the most important things to remember about recovery is that the brain is rewiring what you need in very tiny steps, very tiny steps. Yes. And what we don't realize is that the way in which we become deeply aware and attentive of those tiny steps can help change the way the neuroplasticity works. I see. So when we're talking about balance, for instance, we're talking about learning to work with those shifts in little tiny steps. So when you stand up and you feel your balance, the idea would be to tune into the edge of where that begins to move and you lose control of it. So the more you become aware of where that happens as you move your trunk, the more you can begin to work with how to reinforce keeping your balance cleaner. It doesn't happen all at once. It's a little tiny bit. So I would do things like I would stand holding onto a wall or holding onto a bar, whatever I, or whatever I felt stable with, and then I'd pick up one foot very slowly and just see what happens with the shifts in balance when you do that. Pay really close attention to what's happening in your trunk. And as you notice that, then you can begin to change the way you respond to it. You can learn a new way to respond to where those shifts are. And that's how we encourage neuroplasticity to begin to work on the problem. When we bring attention to it in those little places, we begin to be able to shift it. And the brain responds to the curiosity. It's like when you get really curious about what's going on instead of getting reactive and not liking it, just getting really, really curious. What is this exactly? Curiosity yeah. stimulates neuroplasticity. I see. And if you make one small change, success stimulates neuroplasticity. So yeah. if you find working and making these tiny changes, we want it to happen all at once, but it doesn't. Let me say something. Let me say something about Tai Chi and yoga. Right. Both of them are exercises in attention. We're doing exactly. a, we're doing a movement, but we're really precisely we're paying attention acutely to what we're to what we're doing, and in that way, it's very much related to what you're talking about, Allison. It's a perfect example, Reams. Perfect. And all those things we know stimulate changes in the brain. I mean, that stuff has been studied. We know it stimulates changes in the brain. Well, we've had a nice meeting today. Okay. Uh, I thank you all for joining in. Thank you. Um, you know, we're we're thinking about how to you know how to use this in the future. One way is to identify a topic in advance 
uh, that's relevant for everybody and uh, have the discussion on that day uh, focus on on that. Today we seem to be uh, focused on balance and walking, which was mm -hmm. informative to me, and I appreciate your contribution to that, Allison. Mm -hmm. I didn't say something about my own uh, balance and walking situation. I say two things. One, I walk well, and I also fall down well. So, so it's an issue for me too. Greens, I have one suggestion. Yeah. I noticed that you are recording the session. Yep. I can help you put this on YouTube. If you send an email out to all the participants and they say thank you for all the participation, we had a great meeting. And by the way, here's a video. Even if you show a part of it, I think that would arouse a lot of interest and curiosity for people, more people to join. Well, that brings up another point. If we're going to host our discussions, everybody who's participating needs to give their consent for that. Mm -hmm. so, I, I would say one more small thing on the balance. Yes. If I might, Reams. Sure. And what I would say is that 13 years out, my coordination in my trunk is still what's called hyperreflexive, uh -huh. which means that when something startles me or I unbalance, I'm not smooth. I do I sort of vibrate like this. Hmm. It's also true that in my left leg, the motion is not entirely smooth, particularly in the foot, which I continue to work with. But I can hike for a couple of miles. Wow. And a lot of that has to do with the quality with which I keep attention on what I'm doing all the time. So that when something happens, I can begin to contemplate and be able to keep moving. And when I'm able to do that, my brain keeps on learning what it needs to do. So I, I think the whole issue of balance and coordination is incredibly important and that it's a place where we really have a lot of opportunity to work. 